In the shop, we have a 99 Camry with a 2.2 liter engine and about 207,000 miles on it. It has no drivability issues, but it's failed an emissions test. It also has a PO446 trouble code set. PO446 means the computer has detected a leak when the vacuum switching valve, or VSV, has switched to the canister during an EVAP monitor test. This could mean a problem in the canister, VSV, vacuum hoses, wiring, or the PCM. Our first stop is to check with Identifix to see if there's any common failures for this code on this vehicle. Bam! There it is. Look at that. The vast majority of results for this code has us replacing the entire canister. But the canister is an expensive guess. I'll feel a whole lot more comfortable if I can verify it's actually the canister causing the problem. This canister is located over the rear suspension, just in front of the fuel tank. The only way to test this problem is on a hoist, so up she goes. As you can see, even on a full hoist, the canister is not easy to get to. First, we check the hoses and electrical connections. Everything looks good here. It's time to pull the canister and perform a bench test on it. To get this canister snaked out, you have to drop the exhaust system at least a few inches, and as you can see, it's still a tight squeeze. Start the testing by shaking the canister and search the vacuum hoses for charcoal chips. If any are found, the canister needs to be replaced and the lines on the vehicle need to be blown out. Before you proceed with the remaining diagnosis on this system, you first must verify whether you have an early or late design EVAP system. This is dictated by year and model, as this diagram shows. We're working with the early design. This design is unique because it incorporates a three-way VSV. Later designs use a bypass VSV. This VSV has three connections. One goes to the canister, another to the purge solenoid, and the third to the pressure sensor. Next, we applied voltage from a 9-volt battery to the electrical connection on the VSV. When this is done, an audible click should be heard. Well, guess what? We heard and felt nothing. At this point, we knew the VSV was defective, and because of the design, the entire canister must be replaced. The most common cause for this failure is a defect in the VSV. But let's take a look at doing a complete check on the three-way VSV on the new canister. You'll need a couple of jumper wires, a 9 or 12 volt battery, and two vacuum pumps. Connect the vacuum pumps to the vacuum hoses from the VSV to the pressure sensor and purge valve. Connect the jumper leads to the VSV solenoid, but don't activate it just yet. Pump the vacuum pump connected to the hose that was on the pressure sensor and you should not be able to accumulate vacuum. Now activate the VSV and pump that same pump. You should now see the vacuum build on both pump gauges. Stop when you reach about 18 inches. Disconnect the battery and the vacuum should hold on the gauge connected to the purge valve for at least 10 seconds. Now reconnect the battery and the vacuum on the gauge should drop to zero. If it operates like this, the VSV is working properly. Now, just reverse the order and replace the canister and clear the codes. This vehicle now passed the emission tests and we have one happy driver. We'll see you again next time in the Wells Garage.